Good afternoon, Canada. Welcome to another edition of the True North Report. My name is Andrew Lawton with you for the next little while as we talk about how Justin Trudeau's government has once again found itself in the midst of a public prosecution of a very high profile nature. And once again, Justin Trudeau's government has put itself on the wrong side of said public prosecution. Although a little bit different, there are a lot of similarities between the case against Vice Admiral Mark Norman and the case against SNC Lavalin, the case that we've been talking about now for some months. And I want to bring this up because we see the complete and utter hypocrisy from the Justin Trudeau government on this file. So we'll talk about all that as the stream goes on. If you're tuning in from wherever in the world it is from which you are tuning, I think that's the proper way, all of those preposition stuff, uh, all that prep preposition stuff. Uh, let me know in the chat what's going on and where you're watching from and what it is you think about this. Jean or Jean, I think it's Jean. I, I hope I'm, I'm correct, says good afternoon. Well, good afternoon, Jean or Jean. It's great to, Jean, rather, it's great to have you uh, tuned in here. And to everyone else, thank you very much. You know, I want to bring up the parallel between SNC and Mark Norman because they show that the government is not above putting itself into these things and doing so despite the political consequences of it. So SNC, which is still going on, we know Justin Trudeau tried to pressure the Attorney General at the time, Jody Wilson-Raybould, to basically intervene in an ongoing prosecution with the purpose of abandoning it, entering into some deferred prosecution agreement and letting it so the company could basically get away with its, well, get away with its bribing. They get away with its misconduct. That was what Trudeau was trying to get Jody Wilson-Raybould to do. That was what Michael Wernick on Trudeau's urging was trying to get Jody Wilson-Raybould to do. And the federal government, which has longstanding ties, the Liberal Party specifically, longstanding ties to the SNC-Lavalin apparatus, was intervening to protect this company. So then you go to the Mark Norman case, and it's the opposite, where this prosecution was ongoing up until a couple days ago, and we'll talk about what happened there, and the government decided to push, I'd, I'd say push for it. The government was, it sounded like politically intervening to drive the narrative that Mark Norman had in some way disgraced his country and his uniform, which the more we learned, uh, we learned could not be further from the truth. And it's a complicated case and a convoluted case and one that goes back quite a while. He was charged in March of 2018, so about a year and two months ago. And as of two days ago, federal prosecutors are abandoning the breach of trust case. They're saying, nope, they have not gone so far as to exonerate him, though, and I find this part interesting, but they have said that they do not believe there is a reasonable prospect of conviction. And one question that I think is incredibly valid here, apart from why drop the charges, is why were they brought against him in the first place? And this question, there's no real answer for that doesn't ultimately go back to Justin Trudeau. You know, Christy Blatchford wrote in the National Post uh, this blurb that I, I think is relevant here. She writes, one of the prosecution's biggest hurdles was in proving one of what are called the essential elements of the offense of breach of trust. In particular, that Norman had the intent of using his office for a purpose other than the public good. That usually translates to having had a corrupt or dishonest intention, and yet the government has never alleged that Norman personally benefited in any way from his alleged leaking. The leaking, of course, uh, allegation that he uh, leaked cabinet documents regarding a $700 million shipbuilding deal. And I think $700 billion is pretty much what his legal bills are up to now. Uh, but there was never any instance of bribery that was alleged. There was never anything untoward. He wasn't trading secrets. He, he, he was alleged to have leaked it. But there's no evidence that he did so for a purpose other than the public good, if he did exactly what's being described. And what's so dangerous here 
is that we have from Norman a long-standing relationship with the previous conservative government and conservative cabinet, and then the prosecution comes under the current liberal government. And that's not just, I mean, some cases that's just timing. I get that. But it's very difficult to not draw a line between what Trudeau may have thought was an allegiance issue, despite the fact that Mark Norman has never been anything other than a uh, fair and honest and completely capable public servant. He's exactly what you'd expect of a vice admiral, admiral, an admirable admiral, if you will, and he's exactly what you'd demand of it. So again, the point that I drive here is that Trudeau has found himself on the wrong side of another public prosecution. In the case of SNC Lavalin, he's trying to intervene to get his buddies off. And in the case of Mark Norman, he's aggressively pushing to get his enemy uh, prosecuted, tried, and ultimately convicted. And I don't know where he was hoping it would go. You know, I want to read a little bit about what led to him getting the charge dropped in the first place. And this is a CBC headline published on the evening of May 8th. So that's yesterday evening. Information from former Conservative cabinet ministers helped put an end to Norman case. And the Crown, so the people that were tasked with prosecuting him, said this. It's a complex legal charge. We didn't have the entire information. Then why were you doing it in the first place? If you didn't have the entire information, why were you driving this case initially? And here's what the CBC story reveals. The Crown's case began to collapse in March, so two months ago, partly under the weight of information from several former Conservative cabinet ministers and staffers. They were key players in the previous government's $668 million deal to have the Navy shipyard in Levy, Quebec, convert and lease a supply ship to the Navy, some of whom were interviewed by a lawyer representing the former vice chief of the defense staff. So that's Norman's lawyer, Marie Hennon, or one of her colleagues. But all of these key players that were involved in the case, I want to read a line about this. These individuals were never questioned by the RCMP or the Crown in the run-up to a breach of trust charge being laid against Norman a year ago. So you have these key witnesses, none of whom were asked questions about the police agency responsible for charging Norman, the Crown responsible for prosecuting that charge, and we're supposed to believe that this was a charge that was uh, decided on after reviewing all the evidence and determining it was appropriate. No, it sounds like they steamrolled ahead in this, and it took them 14 months, 14 months to be able to say, oh, uh, you know, we didn't have all the information. Let, let's walk this back. They should have known this right away. They should have known this before charging him, as a matter of fact. Libby writes, the government is paying his legal bills after having him charged. Yes, this was something mentioned by Defense Minister Harjit Sajan uh, when the announcement was made that the federal government preemptively offered this guy his legal bills. And, and I want to explain for a moment why that is more cynical than benevolent. And first off, Norman didn't even ask yet. He probably would have asked, but he didn't even ask. He actually learned about it from a reporter. Someone, someone was saying, I heard this on the radio. I haven't heard the clip yet. But he was uh, basically being asked a question. He was speaking and someone said, you know, the government's doing this. Oh, really? What? What? Like he, he had no idea. So he didn't even ask for this or push for it yet. And the federal government saying, OK, we'll, we'll give you these uh, these legal bills. And a statement that came from the chief of defense staff suggests that they are trying to find a way to get Vice Admiral Norman returning to his post, which. It, it, it's really upsetting. This is a guy who had his life destroyed, his life's work put in the, uh, basically down the barrel of a gun. And thankfully, people that knew him and had worked with him in the past were very much able to attest to his character. And I do genuinely think that helped him. I mean, Andrew Leslie, the liberal MP, is going to or was going to be testifying on Norman's behalf. And this is the former Lieutenant General, if memory serves. I might have the rank wrong. I think it's Lieutenant General. 
uh, that was going to say, oh, I'm, look, I'm, I mean, the Liberals are against this guy. I'm for him. Jason Kenney was going to stand up for him as well. This is a guy who had bipartisan support, a lot of respect across the aisle, and he was basically completely screwed. So there was a GoFundMe page for him that raised about $400,000. And now the government's paying for his legal bills, as, as Libby points out. But the reason I think the government is doing that is because the government knows that if it does not preemptively try to make this go away, what's going to happen is he's going to sue for malicious prosecution, for legal bills, for reputational damages. I mean, there are any number of things. And I don't think the federal government wants to open that can of worms knowing that there's probably evidence of malicious prosecution. There's probably evidence of the federal government trying to conspire against him, or at the very least, of trying to make, to make an example of him. And I think that the defense minister is trying to preempt that as much as possible by saying, all right, just take the, take the lawyer fees. Uh, but I, I truly hope that he continues to fight. I mean, as a taxpayer, I don't like the idea of the federal government having to shell out money. But in, in terms of standing up for what's right and standing up on principle, I honestly think that this is where the case has to go. I mean, look, Omar Cotter, for crying out loud, got $10.5 million from the federal government, and he killed a soldier. Mark Norman is a soldier and remains a soldier. And I'm not saying he's deserving of $10 million, but he's deserving of something. And what's so baffling about this case and, and what I find so frustrating about it is that the rationale that the Trudeau government used when it gave Omar Carter the ten and a half million was, oh, well, you know, if he, he was suing us and we were defending and, well, if we had kept on defending, then it would have cost more and, and we might not have won anyway. So by their rationale, there's no point in fighting anything. You just have to pay him to go away. Well, here's one case where I think someone is probably deserving of that happening, and that's the case of Admiral Norman. Corey writes, uh, here, Jason Kenney knows the deal. Yeah, Jason Kenney was in the government when this was all uh, happening. Dave writes, most people don't realize the dangers of a government deciding who gets prosecuted or not. Dictatorships do that. Yeah, the, the fact is politicians should not be in the midst of any of these cases and any of these public prosecutions. But now you can't have a public prosecution in Canada that doesn't have some level of political oversight. And I want to read a line from Trudeau here that I, I don't think you'll be able to get through without laughing. He was asked uh, in a scrum at Parliament Hall uh, about whether the Prime Minister's office was involved. And he said that the prosecution of the Norman case was, quote, entirely independent of his office and that he has, quote, confidence that the work being done by the director of public prosecution is good. So Justin Trudeau, who tried to get Jody Wilson-Raybould to interfere in the director of public prosecution's work, is now saying that the PMO uh, is entirely independent of the public prosecutor's office, and he is complete confident in her ability to make the right decisions. And he expects Canadians to buy this. He expects Canadians to believe this, that... Uh, you know, the PMO, which just three months ago was trying to interfere in a public prosecution, has now uh, decided to uh, let these things be completely independent. So I, I find that bizarre. And you can't deny the parallels that exist between the SNC-Lavalin case and in this case with Mark Norman. And no one gets that more than Marie Hennon does, who was Norman's lawyer, or is Norman's lawyer perhaps. And when she did that press conference, sitting beside... Vice Admiral Norman, she was able to throw, as the kids say these days, so much shade at Justin Trudeau, it's not even funny. And uh, you should actually watch the 30 minutes of this, because I wanted to watch 30 seconds of it. And then I ended up watching the, the whole thing here. And what happens is Marie Hennon sits down, and I'm going to read the exact quote. Again, you have to watch this. I can't play clips easily, uh, so I'll just read it, and you should see it. But she was talking about the Norman case. But before so, she said, before we get started, I'd just like to introduce the all-female team that represented Vice Admiral Norman. And then she said, fortunately, Vice Admiral Norman didn't fire the females he hired. 
And she didn't mention Justin Trudeau. She didn't mention SNC Lavalin. But the prevailing sense is that she was very much invoking Jody Wilson Raybould and Jane Philpott and their terminations by Justin Trudeau in taking aim at Trudeau. Because for Norman, this is entirely personal. Trudeau had, for whatever reason, a vendetta against Norman. Maybe he just doesn't like the military, as Stephen Harper charged in the past. Maybe he thinks Norman was too cozy with the conservatives. Maybe he just doesn't like the cut of his jib or whatever. Maybe he doesn't like the Navy. Maybe the YMCA, uh, you know, traumatized him or something as a child. But uh, whatever the reason, Trudeau did not want Norman. And this whole prosecution seems to be a, a shambolic attempt to force him out of a job for nothing other than petty political grievances. Carly writes, this is another example of Trudeau having to get his way all the time. Yeah, but it's one thing to be a petulant child and want to get your way all the time. It's quite another to treat institutions that are supposed to be independent like they are your own personal servants, which is how Trudeau seems to be treating the judiciary, including the supposedly independent attorney general and director of public prosecutions. You know, when Hennen continued along this, she said the decision to stay this prosecution was discretion exercised by prosecutors and the director of public prosecutions unimpacted by any political considerations as it should be. So again, she takes aim at Trudeau's record as someone who has demonstrably manipulated or tried to manipulate public prosecutions in the past and says, this is how things are supposed to work. Politics are supposed to stay out of the prosecutorial process. So Marie Hennen gets it. Marie Hennen gets it. Mark Dorman gets it. And this is one of these cases where it seems almost everyone but Justin Trudeau gets it. And that a guy like Mark Norman has such bipartisan support from Andrew Leslie to Jason Kenney to Lisa McLeod, a guy who's tremendously well-liked left and right, but finds himself shouldering the liberal government's very poor approach to military issues. And, you know, I don't know if the crown in this case is just utterly incompetent or genuinely was operating with political considerations front and center. It sounds like a little bit of both, quite frankly, when they were able to uh, somehow have a charge leveled by RCMP without any oversight as to the scope of evidence, without interviewing key witnesses, people that over a year ago would have been able to say, uh, well, hang on a minute, you've got to pay attention to this. And I don't yet know what the information is. I don't know if Canadians will ever find out what this uh, exculpatory information was that was put in front of the Crown. But suffice it to say, whatever it was would have been available a year ago. It would have been available a year ago. Remember, he was charged in March. The investigation started before that. So it's not even just a year and two months. It's a year and three, four months, perhaps, that this should have been brought up by the people tasked with charging this man. But instead, it was charged now and figure it all out later. And I'm glad that in this case, Trudeau has lost. But for the sake of Vice Admiral Norman, I'm glad that he's been vindicated. Remember, uh, the prosecution tried to be a little bit iffy about this and say, oh, well, you know, it's a, we're not saying what you did was right, but we're saying we, we can't prosecute you. Whereas the judge was very much forceful in saying, look, you had a plea of not guilty. In the eyes of this court, you are innocent and walk away as such. And I think on that, uh, Norman has been vindicated. And you know what? It's a good thing that his reputation was held in such high esteem and uh, Trudeau's in such a considerably lower level of esteem. We've got to wrap up, but a big thank you to all who tuned in here. We will have more to talk about next week. But on a bit of a programming note, I am on Thursday headed to the United Kingdom for the Tommy Robinson contempt of court hearing. Again, when you talk about abuse of process and malicious prosecution, some parallels in that case as well. But we're also going to be at True North trying to cover a press freedom summit that's being held in the UK by Canada and the UK in July. And I, I wrote about this and did a video about it last week. It's going to be an important case. We're crowdfunding our way there because we don't have that CBC uh, $1.3 billion subsidy or the $600 million 
media slush fund. So if you care about media freedom and if you care about the government not being able to just cast everything it doesn't like aside as fake news and you can contribute a few bucks to that, please do. You can find the information at tnc.news or uh, shoot me an email, andrew at andrewlawton.ca, and I can get you hooked up with all the right information there. But in the meantime, have a great weekend, Canada. Thank you, God bless, and good day.